Number 10. Poison Gas Island In Japan, there's a horrifying place called Poison Gas Island. Its real name is Okunoshima, and it was once an isolated island used by the Japanese to manufacture poison gas. It's sort of a no-brainer on why you don't want to visit this island, right? The poison gas was then used in the war against China. The Japanese actually used this gas to perpetrate war crimes. During World War II, the Imperial Japanese Army took the island and turned it into a massive gas factory to help them fight chemical warfare against their enemies. At the time, there were about 6,700 people working and living on the island, manufacturing poison gas 24 hours a day. When a documentary team working with the Tokyo Broadcasting System recently visited the island to do a story on it, they came across a man named Yasuma Fujimoto. Fujimoto was 91 years old at the time of filming. He told the documentary crew that even today, he remembers the exact chemical equation for the poison gas that he helped manufacture. After the war, the Japanese government was quick to cover up the atrocities they committed. All evidence on the island was destroyed and the poison gas factory was torn down. As of now, the island is home to around 700 wild rabbits. The Japanese have also changed its name to Rabbit Island in an attempt to distort the island's ugly past. Number 9. The Soviet's Germ Island There's an abandoned island that was once a secret testing ground used by the Soviet Union during the Cold War. It's called Vazrajdania Island, and the Soviets used it to test extremely dangerous pathogens that they could have potentially used to devastate huge populations of people. The island itself is surrounded by miles of desert. It used to be home to a small community of fishermen who lived off the beautiful, clean, completely natural lagoon. But now the fish are dead, the desert is toxic and polluted, and the island is home to the remnants of carcinogenic pesticides. What used to be one of the most naturally abundant areas in the region of the Aral Sea is now a polluted hellscape. The island has been abandoned for the last 20 years, though nobody has really tried to do anything with it since then. The truth is that it's not even an island anymore. It's actually 10 times larger today than it used to be because all the rivers that used to feed the lagoon have been diverted to irrigate cotton fields. The island is now a peninsula, one of the deadliest peninsulas on the planet. Because of the Soviet germ testing, which was basically the Russians researching the deadliest possible biological weapons, the whole area is potentially infected with anthrax spores. In fact, the BBC recently reported that the leftover anthrax spores can live here in the dirt for hundreds of years, meaning the island will probably never be occupied again. Number 8. Heart Island Heart Island in New York City is one of the most disturbing places in all of North America. During the coronavirus pandemic, burials at the public cemetery on Heart Island increased from 24 a week to 24 a day. This was hardly Heart Island's first rodeo. The small island situated in the Long Island Sound just beside the Bronx was used starting back in 1869 to dispose of people who died from all kinds of diseases, though primarily tuberculosis. Ever since then, the island has been used as a kind of dumping ground for dead people who were never claimed by family members. In other words, it's an island of the forgotten. The history of the island is actually quite interesting. According to National Geographic, New York City purchased the land in 1868 and cleared 45 acres for the cemetery. The city needed it so that they had somewhere to bury people who couldn't afford their own funerals. Since then, an estimated one million people have been buried on the island. Unfortunately, it's impossible to say for certain because a fire broke out in the 1970s and destroyed all the records. Plus, there used to be widespread reuse of graves with people just kind of dumping bodies wherever they could. Number 7. Fort Carroll Island Fort Carroll Island is located near the Key Bridge in Baltimore. It's a forbidden fortress right on the harbor that's been a no-go zone for pedestrians for decades. If you try to go anywhere near the island, you'll be confronted by all kinds of warning signs advising you not to go any further. But what makes this island so dangerous? The answer is that there's nothing dangerous at all on the island. It's simply an abandoned fortress home to squadrons of seagulls. Are they evil seagulls? No, but there's enough of them to make you extremely uneasy. Oh yes, and there are hordes and hordes of hungry rats. It's not the most pleasant island to visit. The fortress on the island was originally built to defend against attacks from the sea in 1814, but by the time it was complete, it was already considered outdated. It was finished around 1848, but the locals never really used it for much. Once the fortress was complete, it was almost immediately abandoned. It has since sat in limbo, not being used for much of anything. The Coast Guard set up a pistol firing range for a bit. Some people have tried to turn the island into a prison or a mental hospital, but all these years later, it's simply a forbidden island that nobody is allowed to visit. Number 6. Closed for business Nihau is one of the islands in Hawaii that you will never visit. Even most Hawaiians who live on other islands have never stepped foot on the Nihau. 
It's been privately owned for around 150 years, completely off-limits to tourists and outsiders. It was purchased by a woman named Elizabeth McHutchinson Sinclair back in 1864. Guess how much she paid for it? She paid the ruler of Hawaii at the time, King Kamehameha V, $10,000 in gold. She also made a vow that she would preserve the island for traditional Hawaiian culture. All these years later, her descendants are still honoring that promise. In 1915, Elizabeth's grandson, Aubrey Robinson, closed the island off to visitors. Then, Aubrey's own grandsons kept up the tradition by shielding the 170 natives on the island from modern technology. The islanders who live here still fish and hunt, they still use knives and spears, and they still speak their original dialect. There's absolutely no contact allowed between outsiders and the indigenous population. The only way you can even look at this island is by taking a helicopter tour, with the helicopter simply flying over the island to give you a bird's eye view. Would you like to take a helicopter tour on the island? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Farallon Islands The Farallon Islands off the coast of San Francisco are almost never visited. In total, there are four groups of islands here spanning about 211 acres. Amazingly, the islands are only about 28 miles, 45 kilometers from the coast. But you can't really see them from San Francisco, as they're almost always hidden behind a dense veil of clouds and fog. The only way to visit the islands is by going on a boat tour, though you're not going to actually step foot on land. Instead, you can usually see dozens of whales, dozens of sharks, and other terrifying creatures that would make getting in the water a voluntary death sentence. In fact, it's not the islands here that are dangerous, but the waters that surround them. Even as recently as 2012, a racing yacht was destroyed when it ran into hidden rocks and capsized. And then there are the legends from the Native Americans who refer to the Farallon Islands as the Islands of the Dead. They were simply too dangerous to sail anywhere near. But besides just being dangerous, the islands are forbidden because Teddy Roosevelt turned them into national protected areas. It's completely prohibited to set foot on any of the Farallon Islands. Number 4. Volcano Island Surtsey is a volcanic island just a few miles from the coast of Iceland. It's one of the newest islands in the world, formed by a series of volcanic eruptions that happened between 1963 and 1967. What's really pretty cool about the volcanic islands is that it's been protected ever since it was created. Thanks to the Icelandic government, Surtsey is one of the only places in the world with pristine natural beauty where humans have never been able to bother the local life. A lot of interesting stuff has been happening here since 1967. Scientists have been able to watch how islands evolve. They've witnessed birds dropping seeds, which then helped to grow mold and bacteria. Within a decade, 10 different plant species were living on the island. But by 2004, there were over 60. Today, there are 89 bird species who visit the island regularly, as well as 335 species of invertebrates who call the island home. Naturally, the island must remain forbidden so that researchers can continue observing the literal birth of a new landmass. Number 3. Snake Island if you haven't heard of the terrifying Brazilian island overrun with snakes, you're in for a treat. In Portuguese, the island is called Ilha de Queimada Grande, but we'll just call it Snake Island. It's home to not only one of the deadliest snakes in the world, but also the most endangered. The islands located 90 miles, 145 kilometers from the coast of Sao Paulo, looking like any other island. But it's unlike anywhere else in the world, because it's infested with up to 4,000 golden lancehead vipers. These vipers are specialized killers, their venom is so potent that if you're bit, you'll die in less than an hour. Anyone who accidentally wanders onto Snake Island is left dead in a pool of their own blood. But what's really amazing is that from between 1909 and 1920, a small family did live on the island to operate its lighthouse. Unfortunately for the family, their tenure came to an end when a group of snakes slithered through one of their windows one night and decided to sink their fangs in. The island evolved to be the perfect habitat for these vipers over thousands of years. When the sea levels rose 11,000 years ago, the island was isolated from the mainland. The snakes then took a unique path along the evolutionary road. They adapted to eating birds that land on the island. Their venom must be potent so that the birds are paralyzed immediately upon being bitten. This has given them venom about five times stronger than similar snakes on the mainland. Number 2. Maori Island UFOs Maori Island is located in the Puget Sound near Seattle. While it's not technically forbidden, it was the scene of a very peculiar incident said to have occurred on June 21, 1947. Private pilot Kenneth Arnold was patrolling east of the island when he allegedly witnessed a string of nine unidentified flying objects speeding past Mount Rainier at an impossible 1,200 miles, 1,900 kilometers an hour. 
At the time, the story gained international fame as one of the first major UFO sightings. It was actually this sighting that spawned the term flying saucer. At the same time that Kenneth Arnold witnessed the UFO, a man named Harold Dahl, who was in his patrol boat near Maori Island, saw the same thing. He reported six aircrafts shaped like donuts speeding through the sky, with his account being corroborated by his two crewmen and his 15-year-old son who was on the boat with him. We don't know why the UFOs were at Maori Island that day, or to be honest if they were ever there at all. The FBI investigated the case and concluded that the sightings were a hoax. But then again, isn't that just what you'd expect the FBI to say when it comes to aliens? Number 1. Macquarie Island Macquarie Island is located about halfway between Tasmania and Antarctica. It was used as a halfway point in the early 1900s to establish radio links between Australia and expeditions heading to the South Pole. Since 1948, there's been a permanent research base established here. But don't worry, you'll never see it. Macquarie Island is completely forbidden. Unless you're a scientist sent here to do research, you'll never get anywhere near it. And this is for good reason. 200 years ago, explorers brought rabbits, rats, and mice to the island. They ended up overwhelming the indigenous creatures that lived here, then spread across the island and procreated like crazy. It took researchers until 2014 to eradicate the invasive species, and only now is the island returning to its natural glory. If they even let one pesky tourist on the island, all that work could be for nothing. Which of these forbidden islands would you visit if given the chance? Let us know in the comments and thanks for watching today's video. Remember to subscribe and check back soon for more amazing content right here on American Eye.